What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. Very special one today. I am joined by FPL Guns aka Ali, the reigning FPL champion. We're going to talk through his draft. We're going to answer some of your questions as well. But first of all, Ali, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you, Andy. First of all, thank you for having me because it's a privilege to show up and watching a lot and uh, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, if you've won the game, you couldn't have been watching that much because I don't think anyone that watches has ever won before. But it's good to uh, good to hear that you've been tuning in every now and again. How do you feel? Because obviously you've had like you know a couple of week m months now since you won. Has it kind of sunk in yet? Yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's a good feeling. I mean, uh, I'm getting tons of messages, and uh, you know, the, having the recognition is nice. But I thought I would do uh, you know something uh, impactful with it, and uh, went on and writing a book. So uh, it's been it's been a good break. It, uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, obviously, looking for forward to season start, and uh, there's a lot of uh, things going on, and I've been quite busy with all the FPL stuff. Uh, I've become a pundit for fantasy football scout, so it's a lot of FPL related stuff. Uh, I haven't had a you know good chance of getting on my YouTube channel. But uh, I, I think I'll be doing that as well. Overall, it, uh, the whole experience was amazing. It's been amazing so far. Yeah, I can only imagine the amount of messages you get when you're uh, when you're the FPL champion. Just quickly, obviously, you mentioned it there. Let's talk about it. You have written a book called Winning FPL. Tell us a little bit about it. Obviously, just quickly for anyone listening and watching, I will put a link in the description below if you want to go and purchase that. But yeah, Ali, let us know a bit about it. Uh, it's basically a book about my uh, partially about my experience. Uh, on how I approach the game, how I understand it, the, the really, really, uh, you know, detailed uh, practical examples on how I, you know, managed to stay on, up top and uh, how I went on with the finish line, how I remained on top, and uh, obviously the tips of, uh, and basic uh, and basics I've been pretty much following. So uh, it's a, it's it's not a long book. You could pretty much read it in one go and uh, there's a lot of I've tried to do it concise short just to show you know we don't have enough uh, time you know before the start of the season so it's uh, the short version of really really good tips so um, in the uh, just follow the link in the description it's easy to buy easy to access you just you get the email the PDF file and uh, good with it Happy days, yeah. And like I said, links in the description. That this is going to go out on Monday, hopefully. So there's still kind of three or four days until the deadline. And isn't th some of the money going to Street Child United? Have I got that right? Yeah, absolutely. There's uh, as I as I planned before uh, I started writing it. Uh, the thirty percent of the profits will be going to Street Child United. It's a um, it's a charity I really like, and uh, you can read uh, a lot more on their website as well. And uh, my landing page as well. I've inputted some pictures of their activities and uh, some detailed information on what they are all about. So it's a great charity. Uh, I hope to generate enough, you know, uh, to uh, have a, at least impact on them as well. Good stuff. Well, there you go. If you want to check it out, make sure you look at that link in the description. That'll take you straight through. Let's take a look at your draft, which I find really interesting because a lot of the teams at the moment are very similar. Like my draft's got Fernandez, Rashford, Saka, Martinelli. Like they're in everybody's draft. Yours is a lot different. And not, not necessarily all, all the picks, but a lot of them are um, different to what we're seeing on YouTube a lot. So I'm just going to read through the team really quickly. So you've got Ramsdale in goal. The back three is Shaw, Estrepinian, and Stone. So Estrepinian's in a lot of teams, not necessarily the other two. Although Luke Shaw was when the game first came out. So it's interesting that he's kind of uh, gone down a little bit. Then in midfield, it's a five-man midfield. Mitar Homer, Saka, Rashford, Foden, and Trossard. Then up front is Jao Pedro, who we now know is probably first choice penalty taker for Brighton. Uh, Harlan captain, of course. And then on the bench is Rodak, uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold, first bench, and then Bulldog and Mubama. So there's loads of questions I have about this team. Let's just start off with Trent. Now, when the game first launched, he was in a lot of people's drafts. And then as we got closer to game week one, he started to come out. Do you think he's someone that you're going to stick with? by the time we get to the deadline and why is he in your team and also why is he on the bench for the for game week one it's uh it's simple as that um you have to have liverpool assets for game week two against bournemouth even though uh 
a game against Chelsea could be tough, you know, low scoring, maybe high scoring. It's it's hard to predict the Chelsea game, but uh, Bournemouth at home, uh, I think we have to have someone from uh, Liverpool. And with their attacking line, it's it's hard to predict who's going to start because Hakpo and uh, Darwin Nunes have been sharing minutes during the preseason games. They've scored their goals, but um, it's still like I'm pretty much on Nunez wagon because uh, I like him as a player. I think he'll, he'll do good this season, but I'm not sure about his minutes. That's why I'm uh, I'm thinking between him and um, having a 5.5 uh, defender instead of Trent. Uh, let's say Chilwell or uh, some other defender. But um, I think at least one asset for a Bournemouth home game for Liverpool is, is a must. Okay, so so even if you take Trent out of the squad, you'll put a different Liverpool player in instead. Because I saw you had Darwin Nunez in a previous draft. So you're going to have one either way. Whoever, As long as you can get one, they'll be in your team, right? Yeah, it's interesting because most of the first uh, fixtures are for good teams at home. And once they go into a second game week, and most of them are away. So uh, by basic, basically by picking a lot of home fixtures, for the first game week, you'll be dealing with a lot of away fixtures. So, and Liverpool is one of those games that uh, one of those teams that will have a good uh, game week two fixture. So that's the logic behind. I have to have a one, uh, and plus they've been scoring for fun during the preseason. I think they will be still high scoring team. Yeah, they score. I think it's 15 goals so far in preseason. They're also playing today. So before we record, uh, sorry, after we record this, um, they would have played again. So I'm sure they're going to score a few more. Um, defensively, so again, Luke Shaw, a bit like Trent. He was in a lot of drafts when the game first came out and he's slowly kind of come out of them. One thing I noticed is you've got Ramsdale in goal and Luke Shaw in defense. So that's 10 and a half million. A lot of people have got Onana and Gabriel. So you save 0.5 million, you still back those two defences. And obviously one thing that I'm concerned about personally is that they're looking to buy Raya. I just think he is coming in to compete with Ramsdale. So why have you stuck with Luke Shaw? And is there any consideration to swap and save the 0.5? Um, the Onana and Shaw situation is uh, easy for me to you know judge because... I think Shaw still has a higher potential that, uh, you know, uh, 0 0.5 in the bank doesn't get you enough points, but uh, we'll see how Onana, uh, you know, develops. But uh, for me, Shaw is a really must on assets because of his attacking potential. He's on set pieces down the left flank and uh, he's fairly attacking as well. So I'm, I'm sticking with uh, Shaw there. And the combination of Shaw and Ramsdale, I think as an Arsenal fan, I think uh, he doesn't deserve to be benched yet. I mean, he'll be in his toes. And if anything, I think he'll even improve by the arrival of Raya. I mean, uh, I, don't, I don't see him you know, losing his spots straight away. Plus, the transfer is, hasn't finalized yet. It's still you know, in the stage of uh, communicating it. Yeah, fair enough. I, I agree. I think I think Raya is definitely coming in to compete. I don't think he would leave to be second choice the whole time. But Ramsdale's been there for like a year now. Obviously, did really well last year, so it's probably not going to happen straight away. And maybe maybe by the time Raya does take over, we'll be wild card in anyway. Uh, Man City are an interesting team because we know they're probably going to keep one of the highest amount of clean sheets. They're definitely going to score the highest amount of goals. A lot of people don't like owning them because of rotation and stuff like that. You've got three. So you've tripled up on Man City, Stones, Foden, and Haaland. I mean, do you worry about the minutes? Because yesterday we saw the Community Shield, and obviously Foden didn't start. When he came on, I think it was like the 57th minute for Grealish, he did look really good. But would you have confidence now going forward? Or has is, is yesterday kind of put you off a little bit? It's the same predicament with City assets every game week, every time we build a squad. But uh, the, the upside they offer, it's, it's always there. Foden uh, hit the ground running. I think he's done well in that you know 30 minutes cameo. Cameo. Um, uh, Foden is an interesting for me because that's a differential spot in my team. Uh, it could be any anyone you know before the deadline, but uh, I'll be sticking with three city assets and uh, waiting for some team leaks. If Foden is not starting, I could always you know go for a Trent instead of him and just leave Foden for the upcoming fixtures. Okay, so you think even if you get news that he's benched, you're still going to keep him? I, I think I will. 
I think I will because uh, that that would be an opportunity for me to play Trent. Okay, yeah, and I guess Trent's are one of those players that you don't necessarily need to bench if you, you know, if you've got if you can play him, then great, right? Everyone thinks he's going to be the highest scoring defender again this year, so there's no harm in playing him. I kind of get that. So you, so you do. There was a question later on actually, which maybe I'll just pick up on now. So do you like to have a couple of differentials in your team as well as the kind of more solid assured minutes pick? It's. Uh, I usually like to have two or three differentials in my team because uh, even though starting with a fairly template team is a safe way to go not to fall behind, but uh, I like to have a couple of differentials. Uh, Foden, Trossard, it's, uh, it, it wouldn't be me if I were just going tempered all the way. Fair play. Well, you, okay, you're an, so you said you're an Arsenal fan, right? Yes. You're going to have to talk me into Trossard because I, had, I thought he was going to start yesterday or I thought there was a good chance he was going to start, and he didn't. Now, that possibly was because it was Man City. Obviously, the fixtures from game week one to, I don't know, maybe even game week six are a bit easier than that. Uh, but also, during preseason, he's played a lot as a number eight rather than kind of up front or left. So surely there's an issue with minutes there. Like, Do you think he starts against Forrest? He's played good enough to start. Because one thing uh, for sure with Trossard is that he brings a lot of goals in the team, whether assists goals he's always active in the final third and uh, I, I think that's what you know really differentiate him from uh, his you know, teammates and I like the price uh, point as well I can move on move down to you know 6.5 midfielders whichever one will be doing good so uh, the 7.5 for, for Foden and 7.0 for uh, Trossard I think these are good price points to move away from them as well. You know, you, it's not like you're having an asset for 5.5 and then you're, you're just locked with him and he's dropping in price. So Trossard for me is uh, an interesting one. With the change of role in the minutes, uh, I think he will, even coming off the bench, he will still be playing against tired legs. So uh, that's how I uh, view it. And he always brings calls to the team. And I'm, I'm pretty confident that I will go on with him. Cool stuff. Okay, well, talking of 5.5 million options that you don't want to get lumbered with, we'll come on to Jao Pedro in a minute. I just want to quickly ask you, because it's been quite a hot topic in the community, you've got Matoma as your only 6.5 million midfielder. Lots of people like Mbermo, lots of people like Eze. Are you confident that for game week one, Matoma is the one to go for? Um, I'm having my doubts about Matoma because uh, he hasn't been really uh, scoring a lot of goals during preseason. Brighton overall, but he's one of those assets that you know he's quality and uh, he will be doing great once the season starts. So um, and his ownership is pretty high. You don't want to go without him if he you know hits the ground running. With uh, and there are a lot of other assets as well. The talks of uh, Mohamed Kudus from Ajax joining Brighton. Uh, you know you you never know until the you know transfer window closes. Yeah, and I think that, that first fixture as well, Luton at home, that could be kind of 10, 15 points on its own, right? And then you can you can always you can always shift to someone else afterwards. Let's let's come on to Jao Pedro. So he is definitely being talked about more over the last couple of days. Obviously he's five point five million. He started a lot during preseason. And importantly, he took a penalty when Gross was on the pitch. Now to be fair, Gross actually hasn't scored a penalty for Brighton since like twenty twenty one. But I think most people thought that he was going to be first choice. But it now looks like it's probably Jao Pedro. The only player I could see maybe being ahead of him is Evan Ferguson. And I, I think he's going to get rotated anyway. So Jao Pedro looks good, but he is 5.5 million. And you mentioned with Trossard and Foden not having a 5.5 because you might get stuck with them. I guess two questions for Jao Pedro. One, just how good do you think he's going to be? And two, what would the exit plan be? If he's not getting enough minutes, like what player do you go for around that price for for forwards? Um, I think he enables to do a lot of things in midfield and in defense as well. Because uh, had I gone without Trent, I would easily get the you know seven point five eight million uh, striker. But I'm not sure which one to go for. So uh, one one of the plans is one of the scenarios is that I'm selling Trent in game three for Chilwell, let's say, and then upgrading uh, Dra Pedro for to um, Nkunku or Jackson or whichever uh, you know striker does well by that time. So I think I have some plans ahead uh, 
you know, to get rid of <laughs> Joe Pedro. But uh, if he does well, why not just keep him? Yeah, I, I've told. I, I don't think I'm going to go this route, but I have toyed with it myself because you do get to improve the bench, and I do think people overlook how handy that can be and i can't i like the idea that you've got trent for bournemouth and you're just going to sell him straight away and i guess you, that also gives you two weeks to see how chelsea are looking ahead of those fixtures is that is that something you've you th- you've thought about absolutely because uh chelsea's first game you're not sure if there's a clean sheet against liverpool you're not sure about a clean sheet against west ham united away as well because uh, i think west ham is going to be improved this year but uh, starting from game week three, Chelsea had really, really good fixtures. And uh, I think most of us will be you know, doubling up, maybe tripling up as well. So, Absolutely. Uh, I think I know the answer to this last question about your team, given that you like a few differentials. But you've got players like, well, the players you don't own, I guess, that I'm seeing a, a lot of teams are like Fernandez, Martinelli, Gabriel, Chilwell, quite well owned, especially within the community on like twitter and youtube does that worry you or do you just think a couple of differentials maybe get ahead and then worry about it later i think bruno slightly worries me because uh i just don't want to have too many assets against Tottenham uh away in the second fixture having having bruno in the first game week is good but uh you know in the second game week i'm trying to plan for at least i don't want to make transfers in the game week two so I'm, I'm, I'm planning to have a, two solid teams and then maybe do a mini operation, maybe take a hit and uh, see how it goes. So uh, the most the highly owned players are a little bit of a worry for me, but uh, I haven't seen enough from them in the, uh, to, to have a FOMO. You know, it's, uh, I, think, I think Martinelli, Trossard could easily you know, you know, match his points as well. We'll see. Yeah, so I was just going to say, and for one of them, like Ben Chilwell, you've already kind of got half a plan to get him in anyway, and you'd be getting him at the point of the good fixture, so it's maybe not too much of a worry. I think people are like this team because you get to the point where up and up to game week one, loads of the teams are the same, and this is a little bit different without being like crazy, like different for the sake of it is what I always say. There's just no reason to kind of be like that. So I like it. On the My Team Tour on Fantasy Football Hub, it comes out at 91%, which is pretty decent. If you want to get your team rated for free, you can use the link in the description below. Part of that tool, it does suggest transfers that you might want to make. So I want to get your opinion to see uh, if you like any of these transfers. So I'm just going to quickly bring them up. One is actually to swap around one of your Man City players. So Luke Shaw to Ruben Diaz to double up on the defence with Stones and then do Foden to Fernandez. You've kind of already touched on on Bruno, that, that Spurs fixture. Foden's minutes, I think, are a bit of a concern. So is it, how kind of, you know... Well, you've already kind of said, aren't you? You're going to stick with him, right? You're not Any any thoughts of transferring to Bruno? Um, I just, I just... Yeah, I've been trying that draft as well. No, Bruno draft, and uh, that's the most possible uh, spot for a midfielder to change for Bruno uh, because uh, it just uh, it's in every single draft I've seen on Twitter, and uh, it just Good doesn't mind. excite me enough. Uh, so, and for them, with Foden, you have to you know be patient because he doesn't start first couple of games and then he starts banging. So uh, that's the that's the plan. But I might change it. It's, yeah. There's a lot of tinkering in the head. So. Fair play. And I think the other transfer was actually... Yeah, it was actually Trossard. I mean, obviously, one of the reasons these are being recommended is because of the minutes concern. You've kind of already explained you're not so worried about that, which is absolutely fine. We, don't, we won't go over that again. But interestingly, the player that is uh, thinking about buying is in Burmo, and you've got Matoma. I mean... How how would you rank those three midfielders, Matoma and Bermo Eze? Like your top three. You said you got question marks maybe over Matoma. If if he does go, which six point five comes in for you? I think I like Eze a lot. He's one of those, you know, mid price midfielders that can have you know, he has a lot of fruits to go. So he's, he's on every set piece, he's on penalties, he's he's really good driving forward. And I don't mind him keeping him for you know tougher fixtures because he's always causing problems to every opposition. So I think if not Mitoma, it would be Eze. And uh, uh, with Mbomo, I just, I just not. Sh- he's he's done well in the late stage of the season last season, but I'm just not. I, I want to go against it just for the sake of it because I 
just don't like the uh, all hype around it. I want to bet against it. So I, I might lose, but I want to bet against it. I, I like your style. And also, sorry, one thing I should have mentioned earlier, not only did you finish number one last year, what was your rank the season before? Wasn't it like triple digits? 215. That, that's ridiculous, honestly. I, I think my highest ever finish is 1,294 or something like that. So not only have you beaten that once, you've also beaten it twice and won the whole game. Like to have that consistency is absolutely ridiculous. So if you haven't already, make sure to check out the book, link in the description. Uh, let's just finish off with a couple of questions. Uh, so as you can imagine, loads were sent in for the FPL champion. Uh, so the first one, and I actually asked this to Jamie, who won the season before, I think. It's, so, this is, so this question is, how do you motivate yourself for the new season, knowing it's very unlikely you'll be near the same rank again. Although, to be fair, you have backed it up, triple digits to uh, rank one. But winning the game again is obviously going to be almost impossible. So are you as motivated going into this season as you would have been this time last year? Um, of course I will, because I, I, am, I am motivated enough. It's, uh, it, it, it's too optimistic to say that no one has ever won it twice. But, uh, you know, the odds are really, really slim. And uh, but that would be interesting to have a consistent top 1K finish uh, for me because uh, I don't know how the season will go, but uh, I'll be aiming for a top 1K at least. Well, a hat-trick of top 1K would be absolutely ridiculous. Also, if you think the messages were a lot for winning it imagine if you go back to back i can't even imagine what the the messages will be so i do wish you luck with doing that uh next question uh, this always comes in which premier league game are you going to try and go to for your prize i guess an arsenal game right yeah i think one of the games is arsenal manchester united at home so uh the trip uh is mostly planned already and uh one of the games will be arsenal manchester at home yeah arsenal game makes sense Here's a good one. If you had, apart from buying your book, if you had one piece of advice for going into this season, what would it be? Um, one, you know, uh, MVP advice of mine was just playing your game, trying to have fun with it. You know, uh, uh, nothing major changes in your life once, you know, win or lose in FPL, but make sure that the positives from this game is uh, much more than the negatives. Yeah, I like it. I, I think sometimes social media can have a big impact on that. I think, like, if you're someone that wants to go differential, like like you have with a few spots, there's no reason you shouldn't do that. And if it does go wrong, I would just take a break from social media because that's where you that's where it, it feels like the volume and noise is so big. And then you get away from that. And like you said, at the end of the day, it is just a game. Maybe, maybe we treat it a bit more than that at times, but it is just a game. So it's not the end of the world if it goes wrong and you get a bad rank. Although it will feel like that for me. But I, I'm not someone to I'm not someone to kind of uh, try and be like that's for sure. Uh, this this kind of goes on to this next question is similar to the one about motivation. So if you had a choice, and your two choices are, would you take seven finishes outside the top 500k, so you're higher than 500k, uh, or worse in a row, but then you win it for a second time in eight seasons time, or would you prefer 10 top 1,000 finishes in a row, given that you've already won it? That's a tough one, to be honest. It's, uh, it's a really tough one. But uh, winning it for the second time, I think that that would be really, really interesting. But uh, I can't imagine the stress of finishing outside the 500K <laughs> for seven seasons. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I slightly altered the question because the, the original question was uh, just outside the top 250K. And I thought that was probably too easy yeah. to say, yeah, I go for that and take... So that's why I changed it to 500K. I agree, that's quite tough. But I, I don't know, winning it's so big. It's just that you have to wait eight seasons for it again. I mean, t 10 top 1K would be absolutely insane. So I, I agree it's quite close. But I guess for anyone that hasn't won it before, you'd absolutely um, take the win. Okay, we've got two more questions left, which I can't actually remember what they were. Uh, oh, yeah, this is a good one. When you have to choose between two players who are both really great and you really can't split them or you're finding it difficult to split them, what's your deciding factor for who do you go for? Is it your head? Is it your gut? Is it eye test? Is it stats? Like, What's your fallback when there's two players and you can't choose between them? I flip a coin, and once uh, I'm about to find out the result, I know deep inside who I want. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. So that, that that's what I that's what happened actually with uh, Wilson and uh, Isaac captaincy. 
which is described well in my book. I don't want to promote it too much, but <laughs> the, the details of it are in the book. And it was really, really uh, a special moment for me back then. Yeah, no, I like, do you know, this isn't FBL related, but me and my wife sometimes do that for where we're going to eat. Like, we'll put all the options in, like, a, like an online, like, randomizer, and then it will fall on one. And I just think, oh, I didn't really want to go there. So then I know that's not the one I wanted in the first place. And I think that can apply to FPL as well, right? I've got to go for this guy. I'm going to put him in. Then you put him in the team and think, nah, not quite sure about it. And it kind of tells exactly. you that actually you wanted the other player um, in the first place. Let's finish off with the last question, which I actually think we've already covered. Yeah, how many differentials would you... Well, okay, we've covered the differential question, right? So I'll leave that. There is a second part to this question. How often do you go differential with the captaincy? So it's, it's nice to have a few different players in there, but obviously we know Haaland's going to be massively captained for most of the weeks, especially early on. So how often would you go different? And if you had Salah, would you captain him in game week two over Haaland? Definitely. Definitely, I would captain Salah in game week two. If I had him, I might still have him. I'm not sure, but uh, I, I'm, I've been looking at the drafts with him as well. Um, with the captaincy last season, I think I've captained Holland for, in 18 game weeks. And uh, uh, it, it, it's not a lot at all. I would, uh, there's, there are some games that for City uh, with the low attacking ceiling and uh, in that game week if you have an alternative captain option in Salah, Saka, Rashford that was the time when I usually would bet against it so uh, uh, I don't it's, it's there is no such thing as a permanent captain for me so uh, I'm always looking for opportunities to uh, captain a differential Wow, interesting. And 18, to me, sounds quite... Without going back over the whole season and checking, that sounds quite low. I know, obviously, towards the end, he was being rested because of Champions League, and there were a couple of weeks where he was injured, but that's less than half the games in a season, and you still won it. So it just goes to show there are opportunities to go ahead. And I've said this a lot. Like I don't know if I'm going to own Salah, to be honest, but if I did, I feel like I would have to captain him game week two. It's the kind of week where... You can maybe go against him. Um, how, just quickly on that, how likely do you think it is that Salah goes into your team? It's 50-50 at the moment. Yeah, I have a Salah draft uh, ready just in case he you know, does well tonight. Nice. So, he's gonna, so you, a lot of that decision is going to come off the back of what happens today? Yeah. Interesting. He's got seven returns so <laughs> far before that game, but six of them are assists. So it's almost like he's become a bit of a creator. So uh, I'm sure it'll be a bit like Harry Kane yesterday. If he goes and scores two, three goals, we'll all be thinking a little bit uh, different. Ali, thank you very much for joining me. Just a quick reminder, if you haven't already, there's a link in the description below to check out Ali's books, uh, or book, sorry, and buy that. Uh, and obviously uh, some of the percentage of the profits are going to Street Charge United. So make sure you check that out. And obviously if you want to check out Fancy Football Hub as as well get your team rated for free there's a link in the description below for that as well ali thank you very much really appreciate you coming on thanks for having me andy it's been a privilege good, good stuff and good luck with winning it back to back this season although i did say the same thing to jamie and only one of you can win it but if either of you can win it twice that would be great uh, if you did enjoy that make sure to give it a like hit that subscribe button and i'll catch you again soon